What's up? Welcome back to my channel. It has been a good long while since I've done a sit down video that isn't a vlog because truth be told I haven't had really any motivation or inclination to do anything other than vlog and even that is pretty sketchy. However, I will say that you guys can look forward to some really cool vlogs coming up on my channel pretty soon. Me and my family are going to Disney World in less than a week, so I'm super excited about that. If you guys are interested in watching Disney vlogs, which I have done on my channel in the past, go ahead and hit the subscribe button so that way you will know when I post those videos. Also feel free to post a notification button if you want to know exactly when I post them. Without further ado, let's get on with the video. You've seen by the title that this is a foundation review. If you are new to my channel, you don't know this, but I have really dry skin and that makes it very difficult for me to find foundations that work well with my skin because Honestly, just about every foundation that I have tried, it might work well the first time I use it, but then time two or time three I use it, and it just honestly, it looks like crud. And my skin always looks cakey no matter how much moisturizer I put on, and I put on a lot of moisturizer. But it's really difficult for me to find a foundation. That was until I did a little research, and I found a foundation, which I'm gonna put a disclaimer, this is not a full coverage foundation. Honestly, it's probably not even medium. It's more light to medium, buildable. But this foundation, honestly, I purchased it. It's the best thing that I have like tried, and I've tried a lot of different foundations. The closest I have come to a foundation that looks good on my skin as far as coverage and consistency and texture and everything is the CoverGirl um, Vitalist Healthy Elixir Foundation. The only problem I have with this, and I have definitely used, I think, probably a little over half of this bottle. The only problem I have with this is this right here is the lightest shade. This is shade Ivory, and 705 Ivory, and it oxidizes on my skin. So like when I first put it on, like it looks like I can get away with it. It's a little bit dark, but I can get away with it. And then a couple hours down the road, I look orange like orange and it's really bad so I needless to say I can't use that foundation now I have tried so many different foundations I've tried foundations from Maybelline I've tried wet n wild I even went to Sephora and asked the lady at Sephora like I have dry skin and I feel like nothing I put on works so she gave me samples for the Too Faced Born This Way foundation and the Makeup Revolution one, which I haven't tried that. I did try the Too Faced one, and honestly, like, I just didn't like it. It did the same thing. It, like, separates, and it looks all cakey, and it was just, it was, it was a mess. Not saying it's the foundation's fault, but I'm not going to use a foundation if it looks like that on my skin. However, I can't just walk around looking like this because this is a lot of redness I just don't want to deal with. So, anyways, the foundation that I found after some research that I thought I'd try um, which the sucky part of it was I couldn't even get a sample because I went to Ulta and I had to buy it Which I wasn't thrilled about because this foundation is $30 which I know to most people is not a lot But I'm a drugstore person. I buy most of my stuff drugstore and buying that was just not something I planned to do This is the Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue uh, Tinted Hydrating Gel Cream so granted, this is not really a foundation, if I'm being completely and totally honest. But with a little bit of work, a little bit of love, um, you can get it to actually looking pretty decent. That even this redness here looks pretty minimal in comparison to a lot of the looks that I have done. Obviously a little bit peeks through, but with some concealer powder you can make it work no problem. I'm going to show you how I put it on and I already pretty much know my thoughts about it. I have tried this I think at least three times and every time it looks stunning in my opinion and that's saying something because I have redness like you wouldn't even believe. So the fact that it covers my redness enough to make me feel like I'm not like a walking tomato That'll tell you something, and I just love the way the finish is on this. It's very luminous, and it makes my skin look healthy, feel healthy, all day. So in this foundation review, I'm going to show you how I apply it, how I have been applying it, what I have found works best for me, 
And another disclaimer, obviously what works well for me may not work well for you. I have found that to be the case with most foundation reviews where somebody with dry skin says that, oh, this is the best foundation for dry skin and I try it and it's not. So understand that what works for me may not work for you, um, but honestly, I think about the only skin type that this would not work well with would be oily skin. Like I said, I already put my moisturizer and everything on. Um, the moisturizer that I use, I have like three moisturizers because like I said, I have really dry skin. The moisturizer that I use, I'm sure I talked about this on my channel, this is the Garnier uh, Skin Active Moisture Rescue for Dry Skin. Love this. This is actually a repurchase because mine was empty. Scraped the bottom with that. And then a new moisturizer that I have been using is the L'Oreal Eye Defense Moisturizer. This is meant to get rid of any puffiness and fine lines and stuff underneath your eyes, which you probably can't see from super far away, but I have bags and puffiness, and it doesn't, like, completely eliminate them, but in the way I see it, it helps reduce it enough to where my makeup doesn't get all cakey and creasy underneath there. And then the last product that I use, I use in my T-zone, like right here, where I have pores, is the Tatcha Water Cream. This is just a sample I got with my Sephora Insider Points. And the box says it is a, hey, this box right here, says it's a refreshing and anti-aging, pore perfecting Japanese wild rose. So I use this and I go in first to sort of help moisturize at the same time and get rid of some of the pores that I've got going on because I've got a lot of pore action going on and it's not fun. And then before I forget, I'm going to add just a little bit of extra moisture. This is my Mario Badescu uh, facial spray with aloe and I haven't read this in so long. With aloe herbs and rose water, I get this at Ulta. This is amazing. I love it. It works great for moisturizing spray. I use it also for a setting spray, so this is amazing. I love this stuff, and it's actually pretty affordable considering how much you get. So I'm going to spray this real quick. This is the new Pore Professional that they came out, the Pearl Primer. It's oil-free, lightweight, silky, and soft pink, so I'm going to go ahead and put some of that on, seeing how that spray is absorbed. And I really don't use a lot. I just use a little itty bit. And I just put it in my red areas and it sort of gives it more of a pinky uh, hue as opposed to a red hue. Going in with this foundation, <laughs> before I do that, this also, I forgot to mention, has SPF 30, which is also very, very helpful um, for somebody with my complexion. And also, with this foundation, you do not want to use a lot. I use about that much to start, and I pretty much just dot it around my face, on my nose, and so on and so forth. And then the brush that I use, they do have a brush that they have specifically made for this foundation. However, I'm not going to spend that much money on both the foundation and a brush. So what I did end up purchasing was a Sonia Kashuk brush. Um, of course, I don't remember the name of it. I will leave it in the editing of the video, but it's a basically a dense brush that's meant for buffing products in. I've used it with this foundation every time that I've worn it and it blends it out perfectly. So let's go ahead and do that. Alright, so that is the first coat, and like I said, it's pretty light coverage. It's really, really light coverage, but I don't know if you can see, if, I don't know if the lighting is doing it any, any justice, but it did eliminate um, that redness a little bit, and it did help to sort of even out my skin tone. So I'm going to go in with a little bit more of this foundation, and just focus it on the reddest areas, which is my cheeks, underneath my nose, and my nose. Those are the reddest areas. So let's go ahead and go back in. So as you can see, it has eliminated my redness considerably, and it has made my skin tone look so much more even, just like any foundation would do. And the best part of it is it's so lightweight, I really don't feel like I'm wearing a foundation, honestly. So the next thing I go in is a concealer. Um, pretty much, I think the only type of concealer that wouldn't work well with this product is a hydrating concealer. Now obviously, I really don't know what is or is not a hydrating concealer. I just have the concealers that I use. The first one I've used is the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind. I'm pretty much almost out of this and I'm wanting to purchase a new concealer anyways. 
And then I also use the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Concealer. This is good because it matches my skin tone relatively well. So yeah, I don't do a lot of highlighting or really much of that with this product. So I'm going to go ahead and do some spot correcting like on my mouth area and also just add a little bit of extra coverage on those red areas because while the foundation does do a pretty good job of minimizing it, it doesn't completely eliminate it. So I just need a little bit of extra help. Okay, so once I blend that out, everything should look pretty even. And I don't put any products on underneath my eye, like directly, except for the like cream. Um, just because, like I said earlier, I have a really creasy under eye, so I just feel like if I can avoid putting product there, I, I will. So as you can see, the concealer definitely helped a lot. It helped to even out any of those dark spots that I had. And the final step that I go in as far as my face base makeup is concerned is I go in with a powder. It adds a little bit extra coverage, but it's not so cakey to the point where my face looks like a cake factory. So the powder that I've been using, and I've used this before, is the Neutrogena Healthy Skin Press Powder. This is in shade Fair. Also, I forgot to mention that this concealer is in the shade Light Ivory. Uh, but this is in shade Fair, and I pretty much just take the same brush and I put some on it and I focus on one setting my under eye. Um, I just put some there and then I focus it mostly on the cheeks and the nose um, just to sort of help add that little bit of final extra coverage. And then I put a little bit on the perimeter of my face, but not too much because honestly it really doesn't need it. And the beautiful thing about this foundation is it pretty much sets itself. Like I really don't have to set it. Um, but I do it just for that little bit of extra coverage to make me feel like I am, like I, I actually did something. <laughs> so that is the face base makeup applied. My camera battery is about to die, so I'm going to charge it and do the rest of my makeup and then I will let you guys know my final thoughts on this foundation. I'm pretty sure I've made it clear where I stand, but just in case there's any questions, I will clear that up as soon as I am done finishing the rest of my makeup, and I will show you how you can turn even a pretty light to medium coverage, foundation, cream, whatever you want to call it, and turn it into a really nice, pretty, I'll try and make it pretty glam look. All right, guys, so I am back, and I have a full face of makeup. Um, most of the face makeup is pretty natural and the eyes, I made them a little bit glam using my Morphe palette here. But now it is time for the final thoughts on this foundation. So, like I'm pretty sure I've done through most of the video, I absolutely love this foundation. It works wonders, it makes my skin feel beautiful, and it doesn't make my skin look cakey, which honestly with most foundations that I've tried is, I feel like, near to impossible to do. So for anybody out there who has really dry skin and for some reason just can't find a foundation to put on their dry skin, no matter how many they've tried, give the Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue Hydrating Gel a chance Worst comes to worst, especially at Ulta, their return policy is pretty good. You can return it 60 days even after you've used it. I will definitely say for somebody like me, and I don't like to spend $30, I hard, gosh, I don't even like to spend $10 on a foundation. Let's just put that out there. But this is something that I can see myself using and repurchasing. This is going on my vacation with me, so you can expect to see this in action when I'm in Disney World. I absolutely love this foundation. It has made my makeup look so good, and I hope you guys will give this a try if you are struggling to find a foundation for dry skin. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And like I said earlier, if you aren't subscribed, you should definitely subscribe. I don't post regularly. I'm just going to put that out there. But when I do post, I try to put the best content out there for you guys. So, that's all I've got. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in my next video, which hopefully by then I'll be in Disney World. Bye!